Good morning and welcome to Working Horse with Jim. Today is a quite a rainy day out there today and we'll show you that in a second but um, uh, we had some plans for today and maybe because of the rain it's going to stop us from doing that. But we still want to explain a few things and talk about a few things and even show you a few things even today even if it's not what we had originally planned. I um, want to give you a quick update with Ken. Um, Ken is behind me right here. Ken is the one that's had a, a bout of cellulitis. Um, why exactly this happened, we're not sure. It's just possible from a reoccurring because he's had this before and the vets tell me that, you know, once they get it, they, they can get it again with very little reason. So, but anyways, in the last video you saw, we had put a wrap on, or Petra had put a wrap on his leg and I was shocked and amazed and very thankful. The next morning, that leg had just completely gone back to its normal self. Now this particular leg on Bill, and I'm gonna show it to you right now, this particular Ken, Ken this particular leg on Ken has always been, ever since he's had this original problem with cellulitis, has always been a little bit bigger than, than this leg here. So you can see it is definitely still swollen a tiny little bit, but it's, it's, it's kind of his normal. Um, also, just a few seconds ago, um, he was actually standing on this leg and resting on this leg. He's still walking, not very good. It feels still quite sore, but the improvement is tremendous. Um, we have hopes that he'll be back to his old self before too long. Um, I still have shoes on his feet. Some people have asked, well, why don't you take the shoes off during this situation? Well, <laughs> that's kind of a silly question in a sense because it's, you can't take the shoes off the horse when he's this lame. You know, he's not gonna just lay down for me so I can take his shoes off. He has to be somewhat sound so that he can stand on three feet so I can pull the shoes off. Also, this foot here especially has to be flexible enough to be able to bring up to pull the shoe off, whether it's on the ground like this or in the shoe and stocks. So it's just not practical to take his shoes off at this stage. But it is time to take his shoes off um, spring, uh, I should say early, early spring is here. Um, so he does not need these uh, snow pads for one on his shoes. And also it's just time to, for reset or for him, it's gonna be a time of just taking the shoes off and he'll be barefoot for a little while. Bill, also, it's time to take his shoes off. Now, I would normally put these same pulling shoes, logging shoes back on him. But I think under the circumstances that we're dealing with, I think when I pull his shoes off, or when we pull the shoes off, I'll pull the snow pads off of his feet because he doesn't need them anymore. And I'll probably put on my flat shoes for a little while on him. I want to keep him having shoes on because I'm still doing a little bit of logging. Right at the moment, I'm out in back of our farm and we're cutting firewood. We've got some orders for firewood that we need to deal with. So I have actually been uh, logged with Baron uh, a couple days ago, just for a few hours, but he did really well. And I'll show you that here in an upcoming video, I'm sure. Um, but uh, it's kind of rocky out there. So I still need shoes. So I'll, put, I'll be putting the flat shoes back on Bill. People have asked me, well, what about Baron? When are you gonna be putting shoes on him? Well, a week ago, I had said to myself, I'm gonna start working him, but I have no intention of putting shoes on him. He's got really, really good feet, um, but I don't think I'll go and bother with shoes. Well, since I went in the woods with him the other day, and because of the way he was pulling, which was very, very good, um, and because of the rocks that are out there, I'm a little bit concerned with his feet. So I am planning I'm putting front shoes on him right off. As a matter of fact, that's one of the things we were planning on doing today. We were planning on possibly hitching him up to the cart, which I haven't done for a long time single, and uh, actually run down to my neighbor, Amish neighbor, and get some, buy some shoes, some front shoes for him. That may or may not happen today. We, there's a little break in the weather about midday that maybe we can do that, we'll see. But anyways, I'm gonna put him in the stocks and put shoes right on his front feet. At least that is the plan. We'll see how that uh, progresses. Yesterday, we spent a whole pile of manure. Let me show you what we did yesterday. On our way out there, um, I just uh, wanted to say, wasn't it nice everybody gave a lot of suggestions on 
how to take care of the pill situation better? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. And I have noticed that when I put the pills, the way I've been doing it, I put the pills in, in a, a cup. And the first few days, I was just, uh, he's still on antibiotics. He's still got two more days. Um, uh, the first few days, I was just kind of putting warmish water in with the pills, and it really didn't do a heck of a lot. I had to still crush them up. Um, but the last few days, I've been putting hot, hot water with them, and they just pff, dissolve almost immediately. It's amazing. And then we're still using the applesauce, which works really good, and I'm just sucking up with the syringe and putting it right in them, and he's, he's, not, uh, he's not bothering at all. It's going good. So yesterday, I had... Uh, Bill and Baron, who's down to my manure spreader, this cart and this manure spreader, and I spread, I cleaned the, my pen here where I have my, my young stock. Um, now, in this pen, there has been several months worth of manure and hay buildup. A lot of times, we'll throw hay in there, not, well, sometimes we'll throw hay into the pen, and it just turns into a, a bedding pack and sometimes it's very hard to dig into that and to bring it out and even to spread it. Um, I have a way that I actually put another set of, or another single um, pallet fork on my skid steer. So I have three forks, sometimes even four, and I go in there and it breaks up really nice and I kind of shake it up a little bit before I put it in the spreader. And I'll show you that in a second. But this hay here is, we still have quite a few of these round bales right here. You might not be able to see them because it's dark in here, but these are all second cutting, really, really nice second cutting hay. And Brenda actually does the feeding of these young stock. And what we do is we put the bale upright so that she can actually go around and unroll it. And that's working pretty good, right, Brenda? Yeah, just to, it's easier to just throw a few bales down, but. Yes, this is more time consuming, but this way, is really good feed, of course. Yeah, too. they love it. Um, we we could get it closer and then they could chew a portion of the bale, but it just works better just to unroll it like this and feed accordingly. So as we come out here, this is some of the manure from that pen. Um, I actually spread, I think, eight loads yesterday with Bill and Baron, and they did really good. But I, because of the bedding pack type of situation, I had to really break this stuff up with, this, with the forks before I put it on the wagon. And, and even so, there was one load that we were pulling it, and then all of a sudden, I had too much on, and it actually locked up the tires, and they started dragging. And fortunately, Bill just poured on the power, and Baron did too, and we actually ran with it, and actually broke it enough free so I didn't, I didn't get stuck, because I have been stuck before when I've plugged up, and then just the tires were dragging. I'm sure you guys that have used ground-driven spreaders know what I mean, but fortunately, it did not stop me that day. So anyways, this is just stuff that's left over because the ground was getting too soft. Um, by noontime, I didn't dare to go out in the afternoon to do any more. So I have one more thing I wanna show you. This is my scoot. This is the sled I used at the last part of the winter. Of course, it did not have this floor on. It was just the bunks going across there to haul logs. And I told you also that last winter, I actually broke the runner. And the only thing left on this now for wood is the two runners because the bunks are made out of steel. But anyways, I broke the front of this runner, cracked it really bad, so I ended up putting a Band-Aid on it. I put these two two by sixes on, and it got me through the winter. When I started up at Postmas College with this sled, I was quite concerned that it would not last, but it did. It made it through the winter, and I'm so pleased with that. But I also, I have actually made sawed out the new ash runners and I'll show you that in just a second but um, as you can see also or I think we've told you before the steel shoes on this sled are getting kind of rough they're getting worn right out but I am choosing not to fix it right now because this is a tough time of year for us because this is the time of year when we what we call mud season and we can't do we can do very little in the fields. Many, many, many days, I can't even step foot into that field because it's just too wet. The horses will sink in and make a mess. So because of that, I still need to exercise my horses to keep them in shape. And sometimes it's just too muddy in the barnyard. I don't even want to let them outside. And, and, I, and if I just hitch them up and go down the road, 
once or twice. That's more exercise than they would get if they stood outside. So that's what I like to do. So I need something to run up and down the road with. And I do not like running up and down the blacktop. But it's just kind of one of those things I do it under the circumstances. And I'm so glad I have the option because it does give me something to do with the horses. But because of that, every time I go on the blacktop, it wears the steel runners out even more. So I have decided that I'm not going to fix this until after mud season because I don't care if it wears these old runners out, but when I put on new runners and new steel shoes, I don't want to wear them out in the blacktop. So that's why I'm holding off on this project for right now, but let's go show you the, the actual wood that we're going to be using. So these are the two runners that I have. They're four inches thick. I believe it's 12 inches and they're four by 12, so 12 inches this way. And they're um, 12 feet long. As you can see, they have a crack in this, in this wood right there, right there. I'm hoping and thinking that's not going to affect me because I have to make, I have to cut a section of this off and so I can work around these cracks to make these runners because I have to have, um, well, I'll show you when I do it, hopefully, um, to make these runners look like runners. Now they just look like 4 by 12s and that's really all they are right now. But these will be the runners for my sled when I get going on that. I was able to saw a little bit yesterday afternoon, get started sawing. We gotta clean up the mess in here and get cleaned up because I do wanna do a little bit of sawing this spring, maybe a little bit more than last spring. Um, I had, uh, my battery was giving me troubles on the sawmill yesterday, but uh, I got that charged up and I'm ready to go. So even today, I'll probably do quite a lot of sawing. So we'll, See how the day goes and we'll show you some more stuff. Our daughter Abby has her house that she's redoing up the road and, and uh, so these are a bunch of two by fours that she's needing for her house. And she's also making a big dormer on her house. So I need to make a bunch of two by eight by 14s. Um, I've got some 14s out there for logs. These are all logs I've cut last fall. So they're older logs, but they're perfectly fine. Um, but I might have to go even in the woods here in the next couple weeks up on my land up the road and cut some more logs to be able to get enough wood for her, her dormer project. We'll keep you posted on how that project goes. This is uh, wood that needs to go through the edger right here. Take off the sides. Brenda said later on today she can help me, so we'll get some of this stuff done. So here we are in the sawmill this afternoon. Brenda's running the edger and I'm just putting the banding on this pile of slab wood. I threw a bunch of old bark on top too and this will all go to, to our wood fire and I'll cut it up and we'll burn it all. I apologize for the fact that we have very little horse work going on today. It's just been steady raining all day long so I'm afraid this is all we have for the rest of this video but I will show you how and what we're doing in the sawmill. I do hope you enjoy it.
Well, did you hear that? I had a blade break and it snapped. So now I have to dig it out of the sawmill. And sometimes when the blade snaps like that, it can get entangled pretty good in the the hole in the sawmill, and it's sometimes a real pain in the neck to, to get out of there. But we get it eventually. When I, when I break a blade, I like to set it on the ground and actually snap it in two pieces. It's just easier to handle the blades when it's in two pieces like this.
Well, I guess that's the end of our video for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and I am pretty certain that next time it'll be way, way more horses and less sawing for you guys that are horse lovers. You guys have a great day. We'll see you next time.